Hello, and welcome to the Fighting Moose Podcast. I'm your host and narrator, Jason Hendrickson. This is a podcast where I retell stories, some fictional and some historical, that can be enjoyed by people of all ages. I wonder how many times I've said that opening. Maybe I should change that up. Anyway, last night I was teaching a CPR class at the fire department, and towards the end of that class, a storm rolled through with a lot of rain, a lot of lightning, and some thunder. As we were driving home after the class, we saw tons of cool lightning bolts. During that drive, John asked me how lightning happens. To be honest, I'm not really sure. I know it has something to do with the ions and stuff in the atmosphere, but I don't know the exact reason why it happens. Anyway, during the conversation, I told him how I heard one time that people in ancient times came up with myths as a way to explain things that they didn't understand at the time, i.e. Zeus and lightning bolts. So that's why we're here today with a story about Jupiter. Now in case you aren't familiar, Jupiter is the Roman equivalent of Zeus, who is a Greek god. The story's title is The Gods and the Giants, which comes to us from the book Gods and Heroes, written by R. E. Francillon. Watching the news, I guess the average rainfall is down in a lot of places around the United States. So hopefully you are getting some rain and maybe seeing some cool lightning bolts being thrown around by Jupiter. Now, let's turn to today's story. I hope you enjoy. Let's begin. Liftoff! We have a liftoff! We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Because they are easy, but because they are hard. The Gods and the Giants When Jupiter became god and king of the whole world, he made his two brothers, Neptune and Pluto, kings under him. He made Neptune god and king of the sea, Pluto he made god and king of Hades. Hades was a world underground in the middle of the earth where men and women go and live when they die. The next thing that Jupiter did was to marry Juno. Their wedding was the grandest and most wonderful that was ever seen. Invitations were sent out to all the gods and nymphs. The nymphs were a sort of fairies. Some of them waited upon the goddesses. Some of them lived in rivers, brooks, and trees. All of them came to the wedding except one nymph named Chilone. She refused to come, and besides that, she laughed at the whole thing. When they told her that Jupiter was going to marry Juno, she laughed so loud that Jupiter himself could hear her. I don't know why she thought it so ridiculous, but I can guess pretty well. I expect she knew Juno's bad temper better than Jupiter did, and how Jupiter was just the sort of husband to spoil any wife's temper. But Jupiter was very fond of Juno just then, and he did not like to be laughed at on his wedding day. So he had Chalone turned into a tortoise, so that she might never be able to laugh again. Nobody ever heard a tortoise laugh, nor ever will. Jupiter and Juno set up their palace in the sky, just over the top of Mount Olympus, a high mountain in the north of Greece. And very soon, I am sorry to say, his quarrels with Juno began, so that, after all, poor Chalone had been right in not thinking much of the grand wedding. He always kept her for his queen, but he cared for a great many titanesses and nymphs much more than he did for her, and married more of them than anybody can reckon, one after another. This made Juno very angry, and they used to quarrel terribly. 
but something was going to happen which was almost as bad as quarreling, and which must have made Jupiter envy the peace and comfort of old Saturn, who had become only an earthly king. The Titans made another war, and this time they got the help of the giants, who were more terrible even than the Titans. They were immense monsters, some almost as tall as the tallest mountain, fearfully strong and horribly ugly, with hair miles long and rough beards down to the middle. One of them had fifty heads and a hundred hands. Another had serpents instead of legs. Others, called Cyclopes, had only one eye, which was in the middle of their foreheads. But the most terrible of all was a giant named Typhon. He had a hundred heads, each like a dragon's, and darted flames from his mouth and eyes. A great battle was fought between the gods and the giants. The giants tried to get into the sky by piling up the mountains one upon another. They used oak trees for clubs and threw hills for stones. They set whole forests on fire and tossed them up like torches to set fire to the sky. And at last, Typhon's hundred fiery mouths set up a hundred different yells and roars all at once, so loud and horrible that Jupiter and all the gods ran away into Egypt and hid themselves there in the shapes of animals. Jupiter turned himself into a ram, and Juno became a cow. But when their fight was over, the gods came back into their own shapes and fought another battle, greater and more terrible than before. And this time, the gods won. Some of the giants were crushed under mountains or drowned in the sea. Some were taken prisoners, and of these, some were beaten to death and others were skinned alive. Atlas, who was the tallest, was ordered to spend all his days in holding up the sky on his shoulders. How it was held up before, I don't know. Some of the Cyclopes were set to work in making thunderbolts for Jupiter. They became the blacksmith of the gods, and Mount Etna, which is a volcano, was one of their forges. After this, the gods lived in peace, though Jupiter and Juno never left off quarreling a good deal. Jupiter made most of his children gods and goddesses, and they all lived together over Mount Olympus, ruling the earth and the sky, and the air, the sun, and the stars. You will read the stories of all of them. They used to eat a delicious food called ambrosia, and their wine was a wonderful drink called nectar. Hebe, the goddess of youth, mixed and poured out the nectar, and Ganymede was Jupiter's own page and cupbearer. These gods and goddesses of the sky were a sort of large family, with Jupiter and Juno for father and mother. Of course, Neptune, with his gods of the sea, and Pluto, with his gods of Hades, were like different families, and lived in their own places. Whenever it thunders, that is the voice of Jupiter. One of the planets is named after him. It is a beautiful, large, white star. In pictures, he is a large, strong man with a thick brown beard, looking like a king. He sits on a throne with lightning in his hand and an eagle by his side. Juno is a large, beautiful woman, tall and grand, looking like a queen with a proud face and splendid eyes. The peacock is her favorite bird, just as Jupiter's is the eagle. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Fighting Moose Podcast. Please join us next time as we read another exciting story. 
Today's music was provided by the artist Analog by Nature, and the audio clips were provided from NASA. For more information to download and or listen to audio or materials from all our recordings, or to contact us, please visit www.thefightingmoose.com, or you can follow the links in the show notes. If you enjoy the podcast, please leave us a review wherever you get your podcast or on iTunes and tell a friend. Thank you for your patronage, and as always, try and do a random act of kindness every day. Mission complete, Houston. After uh, serving the world for over 30 years, the space shuttle turned its place in history.